All right, good day, everybody. This is Z Marcel Pertut, and welcome to another edition of the original Free Kick. In this edition, we are going to be hearing from Atlanta United defender slash midfielder Dax McCarty as the team prepares to face Orlando City in the semifinals of the MLS playoffs on November 24th. As always, to follow everything that we do, go to the mothership, the sportsinquire.net, premier site for news and notes in the world of sports. You can also go to our social media platforms on Twitter slash X, Instagram, and Facebook. And finally, make sure you like, share, and subscribe uh, to our audio and video host, including YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and more. As I mentioned on this edition of the show, we're going to be hearing from Dax McCarty, the midfielder for Atlanta United as the team prepares to face Orlando. And he starts off with how this retirement tour has been going on uh, for him, including playing several important key matches in his native state of Florida. Enjoy. Yeah, coming off off. It might be the last game. Are there anybody coming for this one or, <laughs> since they've already been there? Yes, we have a, uh, I've got a big group coming again, but there will be significantly less comped <laughs> tickets uh, <laughs> that I will be giving out. So luckily, the, you know, the tickets are very reasonable and some people got the, uh, hey, I'm all out, go ahead and buy them, text. <laughs> How many people are going to be there for you? Um, <laughs> I, would say, I would say probably around the same number, probably about 40 or 50. Cool. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, this whole uh, this whole last month, you know, with this little thing we have going on with the Florida teams, it's been it's been nice for me going back down there and, and being able to, to be back down there. It's always great. I know, still have a lot of uh, a lot of great memories and a lot of great connections down in that state, and uh, obviously it's where my family is. So I've enjoyed this last month immensely. Is that a playoff year? It is. I apologize in advance to everyone for it. Um, it's a little patchy. I'm not proud of it. My wife won't look at me, but it's a playoff beard, so let's keep it going. I hope it's still there three weeks from now. How do you probably find your performance in the last two games that you have started uh, in the team? Uh, it seems like you're like the connection between the, the defense and the, the offense. How do you find it? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to do you know what what I've done for my entire career. Um, you know that that's I think tactically using my experience uh, to, to be able to play a variety of different roles for this team um, throughout the season, but specifically for the Miami series, um, the way that we were playing, you know, Rob was just asking me to, to, to sit in the middle of the field and use my experience on both sides of the ball to, to help our team. And, you know, I tried to do that. And so um, it felt good to be in the team. I think it had been uh, a couple of months since I last started a game. And so um, I think it's just a, a good lesson our whole team that Rob is, is going to rely on every guy on this roster um, and you never know when your your chance is going to come again um, I talked a little bit about how it's been a little bit of a mental roller coaster for me personally the last especially the last month but even the last couple months of the season you know you're in and out of the team and the team's you know having these up and down results and it's been a roller coaster and um, just trying not to get too frustrated trying not to get negative supporting your teammates being ready when your number is called and then obviously um, when the team is playing with confidence and when the team is playing well, it's easy for, for everyone to look good. And so I felt really good and comfortable in the Miami series, and uh, obviously it, it felt great to win that series. Yeah, playing next to Buck, sorry. Playing next to uh, Snakes, uh, Arthur Snakes, who is playing very well. There. Yep. How do, you, how do you feel about it? Well, I feel, I feel really good about it. Um, he's been a, a, an ever present in our midfield the entire season. Um, he's been the constant, and um, I know that. He's a younger guy, but he's a full international. He's got great experience for his age. And um, what I love about him is he, he's got an elite mentality. He's got a great mentality. Um, you know, he, he has, uh, I think like all of us, you know, it's, it's been a little bit of an up and down season for us and for him. And he has always responded uh, in a great way to mistakes or to games where he hasn't played up to the level that, that he's used to playing at. Um, and he's been a, a great addition for our team, and um, he's starting to play his best soccer uh, at this time of the season, which is the most important time of the season, which is really good news for our team. You've played a lot of ball, and you've seen a lot of ball, but how do you characterize what this team has done this season when you look at your career? Yeah, um, 
candidly, this has been one of the more frustrating seasons I've ever been a part of, honestly, uh, as, as a player. Um, I've said this before, but, you know, more, more often than not, I've been on teams where we've actually secured a playoff spot weeks in advance, and we've actually been favorites going into the playoffs, and then we have floundered after having great seasons. And so this is the reverse of that. And um, honestly, it, it, it feels great right now. It didn't feel great throughout the course of the season. Uh, it was extremely frustrating, but um, at this moment in time, uh, it, it, it feels really good because the team is, I think, playing the best that it's played all season, and the mood is, is great. The mood in training is awesome. Everyone's excited to come to work every day and get better, and uh, the preparation for Orlando has been really good. Congrats playing the way you playing. What kind of spark plug is for you guys in the rest of the game? Listen, calling him a spark plug is great. I love that description of him because that is exactly what he is. Um, every day he comes in with a smile on his face. It doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter if we won, if we lost. Um, you know, he, he's always that that constant. You hear him coming from a mile away. You know, he's loud. Spark plug is perfect. But on the field, uh, he's that he's that leadership. He's that veteran presence. You know, I when I haven't been on the field and he has been on the field, he's he's almost like a coach on the field. Um, and certainly in in the Miami game, the third game, uh, that I think galvanized everyone when he fell into the net and and did his whole dance inside the net. That was, uh, I think that was a, a moment that we can look back on as is certainly one that pushed the team forward and, and was a, a catalyst for us to, to go and get that win. So Brad's fantastic. Um, he's been fantastic all year though. Like he's been, it's not like he's just starting to play well the last month. He's been great all season. So let's hope he keeps it going. Do you like when an older guy chirps like that too? Of course, of course. He's earned that. He's earned the right to be able to chirp as much as he wants. So. Hopefully he doesn't stop. What is are that some a possible things? scoring celebration for you? Do the goose in the net if you score? <laughs> I didn't think about it, um, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but you know, it's it's a good idea, Doug. If it happens, if it happens and the emotions don't overtake me, and I, I think to do it, I, I might I might pull that out. Mm -hmm. What are some things that Orlando does well, and how are you guys going to shut it down and get the win on Sunday? Orlando does a lot of things well. Um, they're a very well balanced team. Uh, I think they're really well coached. Uh, I think Oscar Pereja has coached at a really high level in MLS for a very long time. And his teams are, pardon my French, but they're always a pain in the ass to play against because the series is gonna look different. Uh, the way that they defend, the way that they press from the front, uh, you know, th their attacking players, the way that they, they move together and shift together and put pressure on the ball, it's gonna be very different than it was against Inter Miami. And let's just, you know, let's call a spade a spade. I mean, that's that's just reality. So uh, they're a possession-based team. Uh, they've got good passers all over the field, uh, tactically really disciplined, and um, you know they've got they've got difference makers. So it's going to be a big challenge. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see tactically how it plays out because obviously in the first round you know it's a three-game series, um, but now it gets down to one game, um, and so little mistakes are amplified. Uh, special players have to step up in big moments and so that's I, I think where the game will be decided on Sunday. Them wanting the ball kind of plays into what y'all been doing well in the playoffs, right? We have I think gotten more comfortable uh, as the season has gone on as a team that sits deep, uh, it absorbs a little bit of pressure, defends well, stays compact, and then can use our, our pace in transition. And uh, when the game gets open uh, that tends to to be a positive for us. And so certainly with the way Orlando plays, um, it, it's it's a fine balance. You, you don't want to allow them to have too much of the ball um, because then we get frustrated uh, and, and you know we might start to lose our shape and our discipline. So we have to find moments to, to take the ball away from them and keep possession. But you know they're gonna they're at home. They, they're gonna try to dominate. Um, and we're just gonna have to be really sharp uh, in, every, in all phases of the game, in transition and in possession, because if we can keep the ball away from them, uh, you can see that, you know, they don't want that. They'll, they'll get a little bit frustrated, and if we can be as clinical as we were against Miami, uh, then I think we're going to get a positive result on Sunday. Yeah, I feel like this team has embraced like the underdog role. Like you weren't supposed to be here, and now you guys are making that run. And do you yeah. like feel like you want to prove people wrong? It's like helping give you extra juice. I think so. Um, I, I think we need to prove to ourselves that this isn't a that this isn't a fluke. That this is uh, something that we knew we had in us all along. Um, I've said this before, but I think this whole entire year has been a little dose of humility for all of us. When you play for Atlanta United, when you wear this, this badge, uh, there's 
a certain expectation and responsibility that comes along with that, that maybe, um, you know, we just weren't ready for and we weren't living up to earlier in the season. There was just a, a little bit of arrogance in the way that we went about our business and played, and we needed that dose of humility to bring us back down and, um, you know, kind of reshape our, our my, my mindset and mentality when it comes to the season. And so being able to have our backs against the wall for what amounted to essentially two or three must-win games at the end of the year and then going into the playoffs, I think that was the best thing that, that could have happened for us um, because it is a recipe for success. The way that we're playing right now, um, we're very secure in what we're doing. We're very confident in what we're doing. Um, and we know that not a lot of people expected us to be here. So I've said it before, we're playing with house money. Um, let's keep going. Let's let's keep playing with this freedom that we've had. But how do you maintain that momentum when you have an international break so like right in the middle? I mean, that's difficult. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's not an excuse. Every single, it's not like other teams have played through it. So every team has to deal with it. And it is the, the right situation and the right thing for MLS to do to take these breaks. If we didn't, we would be missing five or six of our best players. So, uh, you know, there's no doubt that not playing games through the international break, especially in the playoffs, is the right thing to do. Um, it's a matter of just your mentality and training. We, we come out here every day trying to get better and trying to prepare for what we know is going to be a massive game. And so um, that's all internal. That's stuff that you can control. The stuff that you can't control is the stuff that you just try to ignore. Part of your role against Miami was kind of being used like hitting transition balls and finding the uh, spaces to get behind. Um, are the safe opportunities going to present themselves against Orlando? I think we all want to be. Well, you hope they present themselves. Uh, I think with the way they play, um, I think they're going to press high. I think that they're going to leave their center backs 1v1. Uh, and when that happens, you have to try to use that to your advantage. We know that, especially with our attacking players, uh, with the pace that our wingers have, with the pace that our strikers have, with the ability of uh, an Alexei Moranchuk to, to find passes in between the lines, and obviously myself to be able to hit balls that, that, that go in behind and, and put pressure on a back line. You have to do that. If you don't do that, then you're just going to ask for the opponent, the opposing team, to just pile pressure on you. And so, uh, yes, that is absolutely something that we're going to look to do. Uh, we look to do it in every game. Uh, we'll obviously see how Orlando chooses to press us and how they approach, uh, you know, when we're in possession. But it's something that you have to do. And as, as far as a plan B is concerned, um, I, I think you you always have a plan B. Um, we know that we're a good enough team to play in possession. If 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 Orlando decides to sit in the low block, then we do have the ability uh, to break teams down. We just we haven't done it as much as, as you know we we played in transition. So, however the game plays out, you have to be adaptable. Um, in the last month or two, I've been really impressed with our ability to be adaptable. We, we've adapted to the game and what it's given us. The second game against Miami at home, we were more on the front foot. We pressed higher. We were more expansive in, in how we played out of the back with, with how we were with the ball. So. It's not like we, we have a plan A, and if that's not working, we don't know what to do. We, we definitely have uh, different ways to play, and we'll see how uh, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Really trying to limit comebacks. Yeah. Uh, is there a similar uh, focus for Orlando where you're really intense on cutting out one zero? I think they can hurt you in in a bunch of different ways. I, I think against Miami, like specifically how they attack, and with the the amazing talent they have going forward. Um, it's very easy to try to just hone in and focus on one or two things. Um, I think with Orlando, it's a little bit different. Uh, I think that um, you know they can hurt you with, with possession. I think they can hurt you with crosses. I think they can hurt you in transition. Um, so they can do a lot of different things. And so there's not a specific focus yet on, on taking away one particular thing. But um, uh, I think the thing to, to focus on is making sure that with ourselves, the recipe for success for us when we defend is staying compact. We stay compact if we don't allow a lot of spaces between our back line, our midfield, our strikers. It's going to frustrate any team. And that's kind of what we've been doing the last month or two. And that's what we're going to try to continue to do on Sunday. Dax, as people uh, talk about your legacy on the field, recognizing that it's not over, what do you hope we don't miss when you talk about the legacy? Oh, maybe just how funny I am. <laughs> um, honestly, I, you know, I, I, I talk about it a little bit. Um, Obviously, like what, what people see, like what fans see, what the media sees, 98% um, of that is all on the field. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff that happens off the field uh, when it comes to 
um, you know, helping your teammates, being a good person around the training facility, um, you know, being charitable with your time, uh, you know, helping kids if they ask for help, doing an appearance where, um, you know, you might go and, and do a hospital visit. Like that, that type of stuff, for me, it's just as important, if not more important, than the stuff that happens on the field because you have the ability to affect someone's life in a positive way that may or may not have the ability to do what you do. So that type of stuff for me is important. It always has been. Um, it's not talked about a lot. I, I don't. I think people that um, people that like don't need that type of of, of praise. You know, they enjoy that more. I'm definitely the, the type of person that I don't. You know, I, I don't need to be like posting every single thing I'm doing on social media, right? Because I just care about the people around me. And uh, sometimes you don't always see that. Hopefully the way people talk about me after I'm done playing is that, hey, okay, he was a decent player, but um, he was just a good guy to have around the building. And that's something you hope people say. Do you find yourself savoring this playoff run compared to like, you know, early on in your career? Yeah. Like the little moments, like, what do you kind of, you know, think about? Absolutely. You want to play in the biggest games as a player. That's that's why you play in preseason. That's why you play in the regular season. Uh, you want to play in massive games, and you want to play when the games are more important than regular season games. And so I'm absolutely cherishing it. I'm savoring every every last session, every last minute I get to come in here. Um, the chances of us being here were very slim. So it's a little bit of like a new lease on life, especially for a guy like me who's, who's calling it at the end of the season. So. Um, you just hope our, our, our young guys and, and the players that are a core part of this team that are going to be here for years to come realize how uh, how special moments like this can be because it could have gone a, a different way in Orlando if, if if it didn't if the results didn't if it didn't go our way it, you know it could have been a much more frustrating last month for all of us and you know you, you just never know how a career is going to play out and you never know how it's going to end so absolutely enjoying every last minute of this. All right, and that was Atlanta United midfielder Dax McCarty discussing the team and uh, facing off against Orlando City. Uh, it's very interesting what he said about this being uh, one of the more frustrating years or campaigns he's been a part of. Because we're looking at Atlanta United now and the success of not only reaching the playoffs, but getting a win at Montreal in the play-in game, the first-round matchup, and then defeating... Inter Miami, the team with the best, most points ever in the MLS regular season, and defeating that roster, and you're looking at it. Wow, this is a really great season for Atlanta, and there are some positives like right now. But you also have to realize with Gonzalo Pineda not being the manager anymore, so they're playing with under Rob Valentino, the interim manager. Carlos Bocanegra, he is not with the team anymore as a technical director, obviously, and then also the transfers of three of the more high-profile players on the team, Jorgos Jakamakis, and then uh, Tiago Almada, and Caleb Wiley, uh, three players that were looked on to be MLS All-Star caliber players, and maybe even best 11 in some cases in the preseason coming into the year, no longer being with the squad. So a lot of turnover with the team and frustrations, but, you know, it's, it's how you finish, and they are on a very nice run right now. And McCarty's been a big contributor to that, playing in the midfield and really being a, a catalyst for for the team. Obviously, with his, reti his retirement coming up, but his play, he's been really stellar for the team uh, when he's been available. And he, when, you, when he's on the pitch, he's made a major contribution uh, to the team. So we'll be following Atlanta as it visits Orlando on November 24th. And as always, to follow everything that we do, go to the mothership, the sportsinquire.net for P. Merritt. News and notes in the world of sports. You can also go to our social media platforms on Twitter slash X, Instagram, and Facebook. Just look us up under Etienne Marcel Petut or the Sports Inquirer. And finally, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our audio and video hosts, including YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Thank you for listening and watching this latest edition of the original Free Kick. Until next time, good fight, good night, and be safe.